just wanna hold you. I just wanna look in. Hey y'all, it's your girl Juliana, aka Life is Juliana, and welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to the channel, you guys. Your girl is back with another one. If it is your first time here to my channel and you have not yet subscribed, feel free to do so. And turn on the post notifications so that way you will always be the first one to be notified every single time that I do upload brand new content. Brand new content. After all, I'm returning good. You don't know, say, and a girl, I love her. To the box. Straight. Y'all. It is, it is Saturday. So happy, happy, happy Saturday. Happy Saturday. Now, as you can see from the title, we are doing a story time. My true life story, my everyday thing, I'm putting it, I'm putting it all in a story time today because I don't feel like doing any home decor videos today, okay? And I know that some of you guys Back in the days when I always subscribe to my channel because I'm a story time, so I'm going to story time, but when I don't know, say I'm a real true life, right? So I make sure I'm having a popcorn and add them something because maybe a very long one because I don't want to skip anything, right? Make sure the thumbs up, just thumbs up the videos while you're doing all of that. Anyway, you guys, this story time, I'm going to title it. Ah. Uh, I don't even know if I title I want yeah. Because there's so much things that I want to touch base with in this story time. But I think I'm going to title this one something about friends for sake, you know? Or something about dent. It's, it's definitely about my dental ish issues, right? Um, Among other things. So I'm kind of lost. You know what? Let me go ahead and start the damn story time. And then when I get to the title, I will figure it out. But let me start from the beginning. Now, this was when I was living in New York. Okay? I was living in New York. I was actually living at the time in Queens Village, New York, to be exact. Now, this was back in 1990, 1997 or so, 1997, 1998. Some of you guys that were, 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 were maybe just born in time, but it was about 1970, 1998, it was probably about 1998 or 1997, somewhere there so. Because my last daughter, her birthday is 2002. I should never born nowhere near them timely, right? So it's way back then, yeah. We're up on the right year. So back then, I was living in Queens Village. And then I moved to from Queens Village to Hollis. And then I moved from Hollis to... Um, I moved from Hollis to South Ozone Park, right? In Queens, New York. Um, at the time, one part of that season of my life, I had a hair salon. I went to hair design school, and I had um, I, I, after I graduated here, um, hair school, I was doing hair from Jamaica, but when I came to the U.S., I had to go back to school, so I did, and I did get my cosmetology license. Um, for everything. When I say everything, I mean nails, I mean face, I mean massages, I mean hair, I mean skin, I mean everything. My cosmetology license covered everything, okay? Everything. And so, after about a year of working for someone, I decided to venture out and I opened my, my own hair salon in Hollis, New York. Hollis, Queens, New York. Um is where I opened it. Um, anyway, around that time, maybe I'd say about a year or so in the business, um, after I opened the store, the business was booming, you guys. It was good. Them times in the button about by weeks. Everybody I get them here done. Uh, relaxers and all that stuff. Jerry Curl and Wave Nova and them something that your girl was making tons of money doing doing hair and nails and skin and all that stuff. 
Um. Anyways, I opened my business, and I'll say maybe about a year or so in the business. Over a year, I suddenly one day started to feel very tired. Now, I did talk about the story time a long time ago, but for those of you that are new, I want to tell you this, and I want to tell you right to the very end of my dental treatment because this is the main event that we're going to get into but i don't want to skip that i wanted to get it from pine a to pine b all right so i had opened my store and the store was booming business was doing very good i had employees and all that stuff it was doing very very good for itself um but as the time went by i'll say a year and a half or so into the business i suddenly one day started to feel very 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 tired very exhausted and so at the time my mother was alive at the time rest in peace mama but she was still here at the time and you know i was telling her that i felt very tired like it's a different kind of tired goodie it wasn't kind of tired where you just know that you're working a lot. I was working a lot because I just opened the business and the business was going very, very good. Um, you know, it was doing very good. I used to be doing here until midnight. Some On the weekends, I would be in the store doing here until midnight for all of the party girls, am right? And so I know I was tired from doing that, but it was just a different kind of exhaustion. You know what I mean? I said, I felt really, 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 really extremely beyond tired. Um, the kind of tired where I noticed that I started to lose weight, that type of a tired. So anyways, my mom, I, I told my mother my concerns and like I always do because my mother is my best friend. And she always know about my L problem. For those of you guys who don't know, I do have a heart condition also, even right now as we are talk. I do have rheumatic heart disease, you guys. I've had that ever since I was six years old. I did tell you guys that also in another story time, but I'm gonna touch upon that lick a bit. Um, I was diagnosed with rheumatic heart disease when I was six. I had a fever and the fever escalated and it damaged my heart. So with that being said, I have three valves in my heart that is leaking what that means is <clears throat> every time that my heart beats you know your heart to beat with the blood flow in your body right so for me every time my heart go boop, 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 um i have three of the valves that the blood is actually leaking from those three valves right so with that being said when i have to go to the dentist and stuff like that <clears throat> i have to let them know that i have a heart murmur i do have a very loud heart murmur and i have palpitations of the heart very badly very very badly you guys very very bad sometimes i trim for no reason like absolutely no reason um so I, i'm dealing with all of that i pretty much go to the cardiologist make sure some arts i make sure that um the valves didn't get any worse the doctor said they're still the same they didn't get and they, they, they don't need to operate unless it's necessary you know what i'm saying so I'm, I'm, I'm just living by grace and walking in faith as far as my heart is concerned. All right, so like I was saying, I told my mother that I'm a little bit all over the place, but I'm still have it together. Um, because my, my lion's mane capsules and it makes, it helps me to remember stuff. So you guys go ahead and buy your lion's mane, okay? Hopefully YouTube not get that part there because they be flagging my videos when I mention stuff like this. But I do take lion mains <coughs> and turkey tail capsules. Okay, you guys? Read, Google it. Google it because I don't want to say what exactly what it's what it's for. I know your immune system, it needs that turkey tail and the lion's mane also. But the lion's mane is good also for your memory too. Like crazy memory. But anywho, skip that. So I was telling my mother my concerns. And she said to me, um, why don't you just take a break? Because I had, I had like maybe two or three people that was working for me at the time. But because it was a new business, I didn't want to leave my business into hands of people who I feel like maybe still training or something. But 
I decided to take a leap of faith and because uh, listen at that point I was extremely exhausted exhausted to the point where I'm now my skin tone is starting to look dark and everything like that that's how you yeah, get literally exhausted I am so my mother said to me take a break take a break you're tired take a break you're working long hours because she used to be there me sometimes when I'm working those long hours on the weekends um she would be there with me while i'm in the, in the shop working stand up i'm gonna put that work from eight o'clock in the morning like eight nine o'clock in the morning right until 12 midnight sometime a lot later than that because if you if y'all know about new york party lifestyle people go to party at two o'clock in the morning and they party all the way until daylight that's new york so for me to be doing here at 12 o'clock, those party girls go home and get dressed at 12 o'clock and go and dance, 3 o'clock, okay? So, I decided, okay, I am going to go to Jamaica. So, I decided to take a trip and just leave everything behind and go to Jamaica. So, there was one girl in the store that we used to work with me. Her name was Rosemary. And I said to her, run the shop until we come back right she went to the same hair school with me too so i trusted her to leave the store in her hands and so i went to jamaica make her take a weekend off and go to jamaica no i think i took about five days in jamaica but let me tell you something while i was in jamaica I remember this is jamaica where i talk about you know where you have everywhere for go and have fun and just relax and mellow out for the first two days I was in Jamaica, I was sleeping. I was sleeping, 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 sleeping. And when I went down, I stayed with one of my girlfriends. One of my girlfriends, okay? Her name is not Lana. Big up yourself, Lana, if you watch this. But I stayed with her. And she said to me, she said to me, my friend, how come they sleep so much? I, good, I was sleeping, sleeping, sleeping. I was like sleeping my life away. I couldn't get the energy to get up and even go to the beach. Even if I go eat something, I was just sleeping, 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 sleeping. And I said, I don't, I don't know, but I'm just like feeling like really tired or whatever. And anyway, another, about another couple of days, maybe a day or so after that, I went to visit a friend of mine in Portmore. And he looked at me and he said to me, what's wrong with your neck? Mind you, I don't know what's wrong with my neck, you know. He said to me, he pointed out to me and said to me, what is wrong with your neck? <coughs> your neck looks swell up. So I'm like, I look at me and my neck looks swell. I mean, I feel to myself, my neck looks swell. Yeah, man, your neck looks swell. So now I'm thinking maybe it's because of the transition. Come on, because it was in May. It was still spring. In New York, you know, say so in New York, in the springtime, it's still cold. It's still like a weird, you look a light jacket. So I left a, a cooler type of a weather and went boom into Jamaica where it was frigid hot, okay? So I thought I might have caught a cold or something in my neck or whatever the case. So I'm like, maybe I must have caught a cold or something like that. Let's just say this. I had, I took five days off to go to Jamaica, just to just relax and chill. And I had to come home within maybe about three days or I don't remember exactly how much days I take off you know I maybe a week me take but I know some I have to come back home less than what I had planned to I had to call up the airline and tell the airline that I wanted an, a, um, a flight to come back before the the, 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 the the reservation date right and so I had to pay extra to change my flight it was no problem because see, at this time I felt like I had to leave because y'all, I felt so damn weird. I wouldn't say sick, I just felt weird. I just felt like something was wrong. Is that my intuition was telling me that something was wrong. So I came home. I took the flight the next day and came back home. Now, me you know, when we land back in a New York, no, right? I think it was like the Friday, the Saturday, me, 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 I got the store. Even though I'm not feeling good enough, I have so much appointments with people for that weekend. So in my head, I'm like, I got to go to work. I got to go to work. 
So here I am now at work. And all, I remember this though. I clearly remember this. I was doing this lady's um, curl, right? You know when the cut and curl ear style back in the days? I was doing a cut and curl. And I remember... I remember washing her. I remember wrapping her hair. I remember putting her under the dryer. I remember combing her hair out. I remember that. I remember actually started to curl the hair. Now, during this time, the lady said to me, she looked up and she said to me, you look like you're thirsty, right? i never forget this. She said, you look like you're thirsty. So I'm like, yeah, I feel thirsty. Listen, and I'm sweating like a dog. I'm saying, and it's not even summer yet. It was still cool in the store. Okay, it, this is still spring in New York, so it's still the weather is nice. And here I am sweating. Sweat I run all over me. I'm clothes wet back with sweating. <clears throat> and she said, <clears throat> "You look like you're um you're thirsty. You're thirsty." I'ma say, "Yeah." She knew that I used to like, um, back then, I used to love to drink sweeps. Sweeps. Um, was it sweeps? No, it wasn't sweeps. It used to be a sweeps, right? I think a sweeps. Sweeps was my favorite drink. A green back or something there. No, it's, um, I don't think it was sweeps because I love ginger ale. It's, I think it was one of those mountain jewels. A mountain jewel. Because now I'm obsessed with ginger ale. But anyway, she said, you want, you want a, um, a sweeps, a mountain jewel or whatever. And I said, yes. And I was doing her here. So she asked the young lady that was sitting waiting for me, if she could go buy the, the store was right next door to my store, the corner store. Um, and the young lady took the money from her and went and got the drink. One for she, one for me. And she asked the girl if she wants something to drink and the girl said yes. So the girl got herself something, got me something, and got her something. Let me tell you something. The only thing I remember, I remember opening the bottle, and I remember taking the first sip. Okay? I don't even think I even drank anything. I remember receiving the drink. I remember the girl coming back into the store with the drink, and I remember, I remember opening the bottle, and I remember taking the sip. I don't remember anything else. That was it. Everything was lights out for me. When I woke up, comes to find out it was two, was it two days later? I think it was two days later. When I woke up, I woke up in the hospital. I was admitted in the hospital. Two days later, I'm awake up. And I'm like puzzled because I'm like, wait a minute, am I supposed to be in my store? Why am I even here laying in the bed? And I'm laying in the bed and I'm like, wait a minute, I'm kind of hard to move or talk or whatever. But anyway, let me skip because I don't want to skip too much because I want you guys to know exactly what happened to my teeth. That's where it started, right? Um. Anyway. The doctors ran a whole bunch of tests. I don't want to skip too much, but I'm going to make it as, um, not too long. So I don't want this video to be an hour long. But the doctors ran tests. The first thing that comes to for their mind is the cancer word, right? The C word. But they gave me a CAT scan. They gave me MIR. You listen, they ran me in every single machine that you could think of. And blood work and all kinds of things. Everything besides my heart that was always a problem. Not even my heart wasn't really acting up that time. But when and the doctor said they, they don't understand what is going on. But they did notice one thing that my neck was this. My, my neck suddenly by the time I left to make I come back, my neck, my neck got huge during that time when I was sleeping for those two days. When I was passed out my neck was swollen not only my neck was swollen but my eyes started to come out my eyes started to push out right but anyway long story short the test results finally came back and they finally figured out what it was the doctor said that i have a thyroid condition 
okay? But he said, my condition is the worst that you have ever seen. He's never seen anything as severe as mine was, right? The problem is that my thyroid glands started growing roots, vines, and so it's, it started to grow and it started to grow and wrapped around my calcium gland, okay? By this time, my neck is growing over time. I think I spent probably about, after my diagnostic and everything like that in the hospital, I think I stayed in the hospital like for like four weeks or whatever and came out and during that time, it was a lot of back and forth in the hospital. I can't tell you guys all of that, everything, but I could tell you this. After I was diagnosed with hyperthyroidism, okay, um, I'm going to put that here. You have IPO and you have hyper. I have hyperthyroidism, okay? But mine was very, very, very severe. Now, the good thing is that I didn't have the C because a lot of people have the C. I don't want to mention the word, you guys, because if I keep saying that word, they're going to flag this video, okay? So... I was negative for that. Thank God I was. God is amazing. It could have been worse. But the doctors now was scared to operate because they have never seen anything like this. You know, to people with thyroid, they was going in the one day, get them proceed, get them neck cut and them take out, whatever take out, and then go home the next day. With mine, they couldn't do that because mine was starting to grow. It was growing at a rapid pace. It was growing at a massive speed, you guys. The doctors just couldn't understand. How comes it wasn't the C? Okay? Anywho. Um, by this time, I noticed that when my cal it started to affect my calcium now keep it in mind you guys i'm already struggling with my joints because rheumatic heart disease is a disease that triggers the joints in your body is what it does right um and you guys i do apologize if i'm talking funny y'all know some of um dental work and this all about this dental thing right so everything boils down to the damn dental work right um, so rheumatic, rheumatic heart disease is a disease that attacks the joints in the body. Okay. Your wrist, even your neck, your knee, your ankle, anywhere the joint, the, the bones are, are conjoined, that's where it attacks. So that's what I struggle, I struggle with every single day of my life, okay? That's why we can't on the cold weather. Y'all hear me telling you all the time, say, me know the cold weather. I used to live in New York for years, you guys. I lived in Connecticut for years. And let me tell you something. My doctor looked at me and told me, if you want to live a long life, you have to get out the cold weather. He never have to tell me twice because I already started to get heart arthritis, you guys arthritis in my hands <clears throat> excuse me okay i start to have art even right now may I, may I develop arthritis but i'm doing things to reverse it okay i'm doing some things to reverse it and this is why i'm able to right now move my hands <sighs> anyway let me get back to the teeth let me get back to the teeth okay Anywho, so here I am in New York, and I'm going to my doctor's appointments, and I'm literally dying, and I'm losing everything. I lost my business because I'm not able to work, and I can't monitor the people who's working for me. They're robbing me blind. Besides the girl, I'm going to tell them, say, could I trust her? She wasn't able to... to, to, to she wasn't able to support my issues. You know what I'm saying? She had her own issues with her kids and all that stuff. She lived in Brooklyn and then my business was in Queens. And my family wasn't, didn't know nothing about here at the time. I didn't have the support 
um, to make sure that my store was still running, even if I was sick. I didn't have the family support. I mean, I keep it 100. I never had the family support. Okay? My, I, I didn't have the teamwork as a family. I have family, but it never supported my damn dream. Okay? So I was on my own. Um, so eventually, I had to give up the store. I had to give the store up. I was so sick, you guys. I couldn't even take the things out of the store. Couldn't take out nothing. No dryers, no nothing. Everything was left in the store. Because when you're sick, and I remember not bought them something there. So I locked down the store and the, the owner of the building, he got everything. I didn't take anything out. Um, I lost my business. Um, I didn't care because I was, I was, and it's the funny thing about when you're sick, you guys, you don't worry about, well, for me, that is, I was worried about nothing around me as far as money and all them something. I was worried about that. I, my only worry was with my kids, my kids, my daughters, I had two daughters at the time. And my concern was my kids at the time. I was worried that if I die, what's going to happen to my kids? And I was just worried about if 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 anything, I, I was more, I would never say I was worried. I was just thinking, you know, because I was, I grew up sick. From I was six years old, I was struggling with my health. So it wasn't nothing new for me. Um, I don't even think I was really worrying. I was just kind of thinking like, damn, if I'm gone, what's going to happen to my kids? You know what I'm saying? That, I guess that's the only thing I was worried about. Um, but I wasn't worried about dying or nothing. That didn't cross my mind. And um, I didn't, well, I wasn't thinking about my material stuff that I had, my car. And I, I didn't, I wasn't worried about a damn thing. I just wanted to know how I was going to make it to the doctor's office. That was about it. But anywho, I was going to the doctors and they was doing what they had to do as far as giving me my medication and all that stuff. And New York wasn't doing nothing for me, you guys. New York was not doing nothing for me because first of all, I was die dying slowly. By this time, my neck had gotten this huge. If I was walking down the street, you guys, and you call me, call my name, Juliana, I would have to turn my, my entire body around to converse with you. I couldn't turn my head around this way um, because of my neck being so big, all right? Um, and it came with a price. Me being sick, you guys, it came with a price because people who I thought was my friends turned it out to be my, my, my not worst nightmare, okay? Whenever you want to know who your friends are, just get sick. You'll know, okay? For me, it was a no-go. And that's why I'm so damn antisocial. And that's why I don't trust a lot of people. And that's why I can't bother with a lot of friends. Because they're not there for you when you need it the most. That's just, maybe I'm just bad lucky to find people who's just not there for me. But that's uh, that's my luck. That's, that's all I've been getting. I just have friendships where I'm always giving. And not damn receiving a damn thing. But stress, okay? Anyway. Um, moving right along, um, to say the least, New York wasn't doing anything for me besides going to the doctor's appointments, besides getting medication for this, medication for that, test for this, test for that, test for this, test for that. They, the, the, the thing that they needed to do to save my life, they wasn't doing it. Now, I decided to move to Connecticut. And the only reason why I decided to move to Connecticut at the time was because my sister who passed away, Marilyn, she had moved to Connecticut. And she said, why don't you just come over and live over there? You know, it's cheaper in Connecticut too than it is in New York. And so I decided to do that. As sick as I was, I moved, you guys. Packed up my kids, my two kids, and we moved to Waterbury, Connecticut. Okay? All right, so here I am in Waterbury, Connecticut, and I'm... I'm going to the doctor because I can't do without my medication. I have to have medication for the thyroid. Um, what I was taking was Synthroid. Synthroid, at the time, I was taking a lot of milligrams of Synthroid, okay? Um, among other things that they was prescribing for me. That made me very damn depressed. And it just made me um, 
crying all the damn time. I don't know what the hell it was, but it sure did make me cry all the damn time. I don't even know why the hell I was crying, but those damn pills made me cry. Anyways, here I am going to my doctor and thank God, God bought me to a doctor that was going to be my source. God put the right doctor in my life. His name was Dr. Jacobus. From um, He's from St. Mary's Hospital in Waterbury, Connecticut. That man saved my damn life. You hear me? When I saw that man for the first time, and the thing is, he had just finished his medical, okay? And just started working in the field of being a doctor, okay? So a lot of times when he would give me medication, he would look in the book to make sure that he was giving me the right one and the right amount of dosage, right? So it does say that I was his first little guinea pig, but it worked out for the best. Thanks to, Jack, to Dr. Jacobus, when he saw me for the very first time and he touched my neck, my neck started to get tough, you guys. I was literally dying. My body turned against me. It was killing me. Um, the, the roots that I already found out, I already knew that my thyroid was growing sprouts, right? Roots, like the root of a tree. And it was wrapping around the glands of my calcium, right? Um, but New York wasn't doing a damn thing because they're talking about they're scared to do it, to do the operation. So when I moved to Waterbury, Connecticut, Dr. Jacobus started to run around. He's like, you, this, this woman needs surgery immediately. She needs surgery immediately. Um, you know, she's not going to make it. You, you know, you, and he sat me down and he told me, he said, if you don't have this surgery as soon as possible, you will not even last six months. You hear me, y'all? I'm a true test testimony, okay? I have a testimony. That's why I am who I am today. What I've been through is what makes me the woman that I am today. I'm a living testimony, okay? Um, the doctor said you won't even survive another six months with that thing in your body. It's poisoning your entire body. So he, he went to, he sent me to St. Mary's Hospital, the team at St. Mary's Hospital, and they checked my neck and they gave me a whole bunch of tests and everything that put me on the, in the machine and all that stuff. And they came back and said, this surgery is risky. They can't do it because I, they feel like I'm not even going to survive on the table, okay? Then he sent me to a bigger hospital, that would be more equipped, so he thought to do it. Now, this hospital is called Waterbury Hospital. Now, Waterbury is a more private, more decent hospital. Sent me to the hospital. Another team came together, gave me some more tests. They wanted to see what was going on with my neck. And when they saw what they saw, they said they, they can't do it. They're not going to take the risk of doing it because they, I'm not going to survive. I'm not going to survive during the surgery. Okay? Now, the only place that this Dr. Jacobus could think of, the last on the list, besides transferring me out of the state for the surgery, because I'm pretty sure he says that there's uh, other, other options as far as hospital that does serious, intense surgery as mine, but I would have to get out of the country um, to another state. Not out of the country. I would have to go to another state to do the surgery. So the last thing that he said, he said, I'm going to contact um, the university. Um, I think that hospital is in New Haven. I think it's called University, what name again? New Haven Hospital? It's, U, it's New Haven Hospital, but let me tell you something about, about that hospital. That hospital, it, it 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 only do surgery for people who have no other chance, no hope. And another thing with that hospital, why I say that, that hospital has a lot of training surgeons. So what they do, they do only critical serious surgery, but you have to sign um, in case anything happens to you, you have to sign your rights away. You, no family can sue them. 
they're the only one that do those kind of surgery and that is the only hospital you guys that would take my case that case no one else would take it waterbury hospital didn't take it um um st mary's hospital didn't take it it was a university over there in new haven connecticut where they have all the trainers the training doctors and all of that stuff that huge hospital if you guys know about waterbury about new haven connecticut then you guys know that particular hospital if you guys know it just come at that hospital because i can't remember if i had the full name but i know that it's in new haven connecticut huge hospital that only does critical surgery. They only perform critical surgery because they use those surgery as training lessons for those doctors, okay? So, here I am. No options. I have no options. At this point, let me tell you something. You see when you're, you see when you're sick and, and doctors give you a certain amount of time to live? You don't even think about the time that they're giving you. Cause that didn't even cross my mind. I had no, there was no fear in me. If I was crying, you guys, it was because of the medication that made me cry. Something about that damn pill they was giving me that was making me cry. Every day at six o'clock, I would cry after I take that pill. If you ask me what I was crying for, I couldn't tell you because I sure wasn't in any pain. But I was crying every day at six o'clock. Now, the doctor sat me down and she told, there was a woman doctor that did my surgery. And she said, listen, your situation <clears throat> is the worst I have ever seen. I've removed a many, a many, a many, a many thyroids in my life. People who had thyroid conditions. I've done many of those surgery, but I have never seen anything so intense as yours. You have that thing wrapping around your calcium gland. So she explained to me that what she's going to have to do, she's going to try to see if she could get unwrap it during the surgery. She's going to try to see if she could unwrap it and move it from the calcium gland, right? But anywho, y'all, let's just say it didn't go accordingly. While I was under this, under the needle, was under the needle? Let's say under the surgery. Come never get under the needle to get nothing done to my body. Um, after everything was said and done, and when she came to my room um, to talk to me, she said, my surgery took longer than they thought it was going to take because they could not. No matter how they tried to unwrap those um, tree roots, and that's what I call them, it's not only was wrapping around my calcium gland, but it also penetrated it. It went right through it. It went right through it. So she had no choice but to remove the calcium gland. So you guys, as I'm sitting here talking to you, I have no calcium gland in my body, okay? You know, everybody need calcium gland because that is what you need for your bones and your teeth. And, and a lot of things, that is your vitamin D. Anything in your body that requires vitamin D, I don't have it, okay? Every human person need it because if you don't, then your bones going to fall apart, right? For me, I have to take replacements. I have to drink a lot of milk, a lot of, um, and I'm lactose intolerant too. So, but I have to drink a lot of, um, milky stuff. I eat cottage cheese and all that stuff. A lot of cottage cheese. Okay. And, and, and I do take, um, supplements and I do take those little pills. Like, listen, you girl take a lot of vitamins. Okay especially for my bones because I have no calcium gland to support that. Now, after I had my surgery, I'm going to get right down to what happened to my, what I started experiencing after my surgery, okay? Now, my surgery was a whole lot of ball game. I almost died. I probably died and born again and died and born again. And my recovery, you guys, was treacherous. It was, it was rigid. I had nightmares and nightmares and nightmares in that hospital after I had my surgery, okay? It was rough. My recovery was rough after I had the surgery. But anyways, let's jump some highs here. 
and get into what happened to my teeth because I'm going to show you guys some pictures of my teeth before I had the procedure done. Okay? Because me, I keep my life opening. I may not come on here and, and, and sugarcoat anything. I act like everything is sugar and spice around me. I'm going to give you guys my raw, true life. And if you guys like raw, true lifestyles, then this is Juliana. But if you want the fake, fake thing, it's not me. I'm not fake, never will be fake. I'm just the raw deal, okay? Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not going to tell you a lot of personal things about my situation in my house. But I'm going to keep it 100. I'm not going to sugarcoat nothing for nobody. I'm not going to come on here and act like my life is perfect and everything. Like my life is not perfect, you guys. Because every day, I'm a work in progress. Every day, God is working on me. So, my life is not perfect. I cry some days. I'm laughing some days. Some days, I, I'm, uh, sometimes I'm dealing with stress. Some days I'm dealing with depression. Some days I'm dealing with anxiety. Some days I'm dealing, okay? And all of that, I am working and still do what I have to do. But I'm not perfect, you guys. I'm not perfect and I will never damn be perfect. That's just on period, okay? So this is my real true damn life that I'm sharing with you guys. So... If it is what it is. If I don't want the fake story time, it's not going to be here. Because my story time, I always tell you guys, when I sit to talk to you guys about story times, it's always my real, true, damn life, okay? And I'm hoping that this video is still going because... <laughs> Let's just hope this camera is still going because I didn't get up to check it. But anyhow, um, let's get to the teapot now. Now, after my surgery... Now, my calcium level had dropped so bad, you guys. Well, I didn't have no damn calcium glands, okay? So my body went into shock. My body was shaken because I didn't have nothing to support my bones or nothing. So I had a stroke, okay, on the left side of my entire body. Left leg, left, left arm. Everything on this left side <clears throat> would just drop, just dropped. Just like that. Started throwing up. And next thing you know, my entire left side just limped. Okay? So, comes to find out it was the calcium that caused it. My body went into automatic shock. Now, after that point, I um, stayed in the hospital for some time. Made it home with help from the aid. Because I couldn't even give myself a shower, you guys. I was though so damn sick. Okay? Um, couldn't bathe myself. I had to have helpers bathe me, okay? All right, that's uh, real life, you guys, real true life. Um, and then about, i will say maybe about a month later, I noticed that my teeth started to feel funny, like it was shaking. And then I'm like, what's going on here? So I called my doctor and I told Dr. Jacobus, I said, Dr. Jacobus, my, my teeth is kind of feeling like it's shaking. So right away he said, come in and um, uh, I need to see you. So at the time I couldn't even um, take a bus or I don't think I was driving at the time, but I couldn't. So what they did, they sent the transportation to, to come see, to, to, for me to go see him. And he checked me out and he said that my calcium was 0, 0.0. There was nothing there. So that is what is causing my teeth to start shaking. Listen, when I say I had... One of the, for those of you that know me in real life, y'all know Juliana had some of the most beautiful, 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 beautiful teeth. A set of teeth, okay. And the teeth started to shake, you guys. My teeth started to shake. And then every single morning after that started, to, my teeth started to shake. Every single morning that I wake up. From us out of my sleep, I would feel something in my mouth. Okay, I'm 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 waking up. I'm like, what is this? Every single morning for about a whole, I'll say, two weeks, I would have either shaking teeth or the teeth would be in my mouth. You guys, my teeth, healthy, healthy, healthy teeth was coming out from the root of my mouth. All because of my calcium. There was no calcium. Nothing there to support my bones and my teeth. 
okay? <clears throat> and so, let me insert a, a picture right now. So, look at the picture. I put it right here so you guys could see it, okay? So, that is what my mouth actually looked like after my sickness tore my entire body down, okay? It not only did it take the teeth out, but it started also shifting my bottom teeth a size that gave me gaps that I never had. And again, I had one of the most perfect, perfect, perfect sets of teeth. And with my calcium falling apart, it started to separate my teeth, you guys, just like you see in the pictures here, okay? And that is what, after everything, all my teeth started, if I wasn't, um, starting to like take it, my doctor's, let me tell you this, what happened. When my teeth started coming out, right? Just falling out overnight. Dr. Jacobus put me on some of the most strongest, you know how you have those boosts and, um, and, um, those ensure. It wasn't those, you guys. It was the one that he had to prescribe from the pharmacy. That was how special they had to be. That was how strong they had to be. That was how my body was crying out for some strong vitamin D and some, okay? Um, one bottle of what he was prescribing for me would have been the equivalent of, I'll say, maybe six bottles of Ensure, okay? It was extremely strong. And when I started to feed on those and then I he prescribed me some other vitamin D also, that wasn't the only thing that I was taking. I was taking medications also and that he would prescribe. And then I was also taking Oscal. Now, I feel like they don't make that anymore because I've been searching for that online, Amazon and everywhere else, and it doesn't come up. Um, but I was taking that at the time also. So I was taking a lot of things to get the calcium um, so where my teeth would stop falling out, right? Um, and so eventually it worked. I say I would, I, I started taking it for a whole month and then the teeth suddenly just stop, right? Because I started to put into my body. Um, I couldn't drink regular milk, but I was drinking the lactose intolerant milk. I was drinking that one, lactose, yeah, lact lactose, I was drinking the lactose milk um, and the soy milk and it worked. And then I was, I was still eating ice cream, but I would eat um, the one that dairy free one. I was just, anything that had milk, it, some kind of a vitamin, milky stuff. Um, I would I would even take the chance and just drink certain things. Even though I know my body is funny with milk products, I would still do it because I wanted to have that vitamin D. But the what really worked for me, you guys, and if you guys are not um take in taking this, please start in taking it, okay? Especially when you're getting older. You see that thing in the store that they call cottage cheese? Y'all start in taking that thing because it's filled with a lot of vitamin D, okay? It is filled with a lot of vitamin D. I take I take a little bit of that every single day. Yes, I do. In a little container, you can put some fruits in it or whatever. Make sure that you're in your 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 um you're eating your cottage cheese, okay? It is filled with vitamin D. It's very, very good for you, okay? Um but like I said it took about a month before my teeth actually stopped falling the hell out. But by the time it stopped, it already did a whole lot of damage. Um, my bottom teeth, like I showed you guys here, started separating, okay? And so now I had have, I have gaps, gaps in um, the bottom portion of my mouth. And uh, most of the back teeth came out. I still had my wisdom teeth here that the doctor saved. They had to do a lot of saving, doing a lot of uh, root canals and all of that stuff um, to, my, to my mouth, okay? To save the remaining of the teeth that was left. And I was working with that for a very, very long time. Very long time that I was missing a lot of my side teeth. And having my front one started gapping and separating all so it was it was crazy. But I said to myself, through all of that, you guys, I just told myself, listen, Father, 
you made me go through this for a reason. Nothing happens in your life without a reason. And that's how I looked at it. I said, everything happens for a reason because after my surgery, you guys, and my recovery, and I looked at myself in the mirror after, while I was recovering, and I looked at in the mirror and I saw the Juliana that was looking back at me, I did not look the same like I did years ago, okay? Before my surgery, before I got sick. God had transformed me into someone totally different. Someone that I couldn't even recognize. Someone better than what I was before. That's how God is. God is powerful. He made me go through that for a reason. For a reason. And it made me... Um, it made me become closer to God and it made me become closer to me and it made me put myself first through all things no matter what it is I put myself first it made me a better a better woman it made me a better mother it made me a better a wife for somebody at the time um when I was going through this I wasn't married but it made me a better person for someone okay um, it made me love life. It made me respect myself even more. It made me made, make different uh, choices as far as friendships are concerned. This is why I have zero tolerance for people, <laughs> okay? Um, because I realize that my space and my energy is um, limited and it makes me um, very wise, okay? And so that's why I don't be bothered with folks sometimes. It's not like I'm, I, don't, I don't want to, but I think because of what I've been through, it made me. It makes me know that what you really need in your life is God. <laughs> okay, all right. So that's where I am, and so that's what happened. Um, as far as my my dental work that I had to do. Now I am going going to also insert some pictures here again. All right. Um, this is what the procedure looks like after um the work. Okay. Um. It was a lot, you guys. It was a lot um, because you guys didn't know a lot that I was going through. Even though I was coming on here making videos for you guys, I was going through a lot with the dentist because if you guys know about people who has heart murmurs, and if you don't, please go ahead and Google and you'll see, okay? People who has heart murmurs, you have to be careful how you go into the dentist because if you are not careful, you could start bleeding and you will never stop bleeding until you're dead, Okay. So I have to get treated first. If I'm going to the dentist for anything, it doesn't matter what I'm doing. I have to be, um, they have to treat me first before they could actually start doing anything dental. Doing anything. As long as I, once I do this, I have to get treated at least um, for two, for me, I do two weeks. Medication. Can't tell you what it is here though because YouTube and their nonsense. But I do take, um, medication that they give me to get my body prepared for any kind of a dental work that they are about to do. But I'm going to do extractions or I'm going to do a root canal or I'm going to do a cleaning. Even a simple cleaning, you guys, I have to let the doctor know they have it in my file. If I have a new dentist, they know. I have to let them know so they could treat me before they start doing any work on my mouth. Um... So I had to go through stages before I could get to this big stage, all right? This is, was a huge stage. And then I had to treat my gums um, simply because of my past situation where my teeth was actually falling out, okay? Um, because I was sick. So they had to make sure that everything was good there. I had to make sure that, you know, my, my, um, my blood level is good. It was a lot, you guys. It was a lot. It was intense. But I felt like I needed to put the investment into doing that because, you know, it's all about your confidence. And I, I don't care what nobody says. Everybody has a, something about themselves that they wish that they could change, right? Um, and for me, it was just my confidence of what I used to have as far as a beautiful uh, set of teeth, smiling. And it did kind of, you guys may not have seen it or maybe noticed, but I did. Okay, I was very self-conscious. Um, sometimes if I was to smile out loud, uh, I would never say laugh out loud, smile out loud. 
or if I would talk to you guys very, very, you know, I, I, it's, listen, it was all in my head. I just couldn't get past that. Um, for years, I was just, I was going to do it, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. And finally, I said, you know what, I'm going to do it. For my birthday, I was going to, I know it's going to be a lot going to the doctor and getting treated before. That. Maybe that was one of the reasons why I was putting it off for so long because I know I'm not like everybody else that could just go to the dentist and get work done for me. I have to be tr um, I have to be treated first before I could get work done on my mouth. And, and so I had to get mentally prepared for that challenge. Um, and I'm happy that I did. Um, I love the results. Um, I did have some... I did have some fillings done also um, because I do struggle with that from time to time. Sometimes um, I still have the same. Anytime my calcium goes down, I do feel it in the structure of my teeth um, where the fillings sometimes um, fall out. Okay? It falls out, you guys. So I have to go back in and have them refill that hole again. Um, and sometimes even for my root canals, I still feel pain with the root canal sometimes. I, if I'm drinking cold, anything cold or hot, it does affect my mouth. Um, my gums are very, very tender sometimes for no reason, um, because of my calcium. Um, and what else do I notice? Uh, everything I notice with my mouth, you guys. So, um, I have had to go in and get my gums treated um and everything that that everything that everything would be done and i would be safe did that make sense i hope that makes sense for you guys but the dentist had to make sure that they were doing the right thing just to keep me safe right and so yeah but it was a process it took i say this process took if for some people it would have took like a couple of weeks or a week or maybe a week for me that's not the case for me it took maybe six weeks you guys it took like six weeks, okay? Um, and even right now, um, even though I had the, the process done, I still have to go to the dentist, you guys. It's not over. I still have to go to the dentist to make sure that my gums are not infected, okay? And I have to make sure that my um, my teeth doesn't get separated um, or nothing. They wanna make sure that everything is okay so I have to go and see. I have to go back. They want me to come back in um, next week. They want to come. They want me to come back in next week just to check to make everything is okay. It feels okay. I just have to get used to the way that I talk. <laughs> you know, maybe tongue feel heavy, but I just have to get used to that. It is. It is still sore. And um, I have a hard time chewing my food sometimes because it is it is um, implants, right? And you know how they screw the teeth up and all that. So it's in your, it is actually in your skin. It goes in your flesh. So I'm feeling all the pain up here and all the pressure. Um, my cheeks were swollen. When I did that um, haul for you guys, my face was swollen as hell, okay? Uh, but I still went through the hall, even though I was sitting there in pain. I had to take a lot of ibuprofen that day, but I still went through the hall anyway. And uh, yesterday, video, I was still in pain. Today, uh, I still feel kind of weird in my mouth, but it's it's going to get better in time. I just have to make sure that I, I really stay close to my dentist. And if they say that if I see anything abnormal, I just give them a call and come in. But I am scheduled to go back there next week, though, because they want to make sure that my gums are okay. Only because of my situation that I have, okay? If it wasn't for that, then it, it would just it would have been a big it would have been a breeze in the park. But because I have um my calcium issues and all of that, they want to make sure that that I'm okay. Um, yeah, so that's it, you guys. That is why I had to get my 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 teeth done because i was wanting to be a little bit more confident and stuff like that but it does come with a price like i said it does come with me have to constantly go to the dentist like even normally i have to go every six months everybody goes every six months for a dental clean but for me i have to go because they want to make sure that it did not sh shift because I have no calcium. Keep it in mind again, you guys. I have no calcium gland to support my bones anymore, right? So if I'm not going back in and checking, it's going to shift. Even though I have the implants in, it still could shift. The gum could shift. 
So I have to go back and have him check it very, very often to be sure that everything stays good. But that is it, you guys. That is it. I hope that you did enjoy. I hope that I did touch many of the pointers here. I know that this was a long one, but I wanted to give you the story time because I promised you guys that I was going to do it. Um, if you have any questions about what I just said about knowing more about thyroid, hyperthyroid, or hypothyroid, or rheumatic heart diseases, you can go ahead and ask me because your girl know all about it, okay? But that is it, you guys. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go drink my ginger ale, half ginger ale, half water. I'm presently sitting here in the theater room. Everybody's upstairs. And I'm going to watch a movie, kick back, watch a movie. And then I'm just going to call it a night. So with that being said, I love you guys so, so much. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Always remember you guys. Oh, thumbs up the video on your way up because you might have forgotten to thumbs it up on your way in. Even with all this story time now, please thumbs up the video, okay? Um, with that being said, I love you so, so, so much. I always remember for what good. Take care of yourself. Bye, guys. Later. I just wanna hold you